First John chapter 4, verse 7, all the way to verse 8. First John chapter 4. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. Again, verse 7, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. I speak very quickly on the power of love. The power of love. We have an, as an objective practically understanding the power of love and also understanding practical ways to demonstrate love the power of love one of the most important virtues of scripture is the virtue of love the reason is again one of the most important virtues of scripture is the virtue of love the reason is God is love. Love is the nature of God. Love is the character of God. In the beginning, God created the world could literally also mean in the beginning, love created the world. God is love. His nature is love. Everything God does stems out of love. Whatever he is, what he is, and what he does stems out of love. God has power, but God is not power. He actually deploys his power to manifest his love. God has faith. He is the faithful God. In fact, he is the embodiment of faith. But God is not faith. God is love. God has riches. But God is not riches. God is love. God is love. This means two things to you. One. Walking in love is walking in God. Walking in love is walking in God. That means the presence of God is provoked by the practice of love. Every time you walk in love, you are walking in God. Every time you, you practice love, you activate the presence of God. Real love, genuine love can't be present and God is absent. God is attracted where love is found. For two can walk together if they be agreed. According to Amos chapter 3 and in verse 3. To walk, walking in God, how can two walk together except they be agreed? Walking in God is walking in love. Number two, walking in love is growing in the nature and character of God. Because God is love. 
When you walk in love, you are growing in the nature and in the character of God. That is, when you walk in love, apart from walking in God, that is apart from God being around you, you are generating and developing in yourself the nature and character of God. So the supernatural can manifest for you naturally. Hallelujah. I'm talking about love, but I'm going to talk basically today about love for fellow man. Love for, our, for, for, for humanity. What will love do? When a person walks in love, what can be the experience of such a person? Job 42 verse 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Number one, what do you expect when you walk in love? Number one, captivity turn around. The work of love will turn your life around, turn your captivity around. To pray for your friends is love. To pray for people when you yourself need prayer is higher level love. I'd like you to hear that again. Looking beyond yourself to pray for another is love. Looking beyond yourself to pray for another when yourself are in problem, you need help, you need prayer. That is higher le advanced level love. But looking away from yourself to pray for others when you yourself need prayer and these other people you are praying for are people who hurt you, are people who, who castigated you, spoke bad words to you in your problem of challenge, that is postgraduate love. That was what Job did. The, the, people, the people he was praying for, he called them miserable counselors, physicians of no value. Job chapter 16 verse 2, people who were seeing this affliction. I, heard, I have heard many such things, miserable comforters are ye all. In Job 13 and in verse 5, he called them physicians of no value. Physicians of no value. Physicians, you all are physicians of no value. Those were the kind of people Job prayed for. And God, 13.4, but ye are forgers of lies. Ye are all physicians of no value. That was what Job did. And God turned around his captivity. Captivity turned around is inside the power of love. Looking beyond yourself. Praying for others, even when yourself you are in need, and especially those who wish you bad. It turned the captivity of Job. What do you expect when you, you walk in love? Number two, the restoration of all. The restoration of all. When God turned the captivity of Job, he restored everything that Job lost. But you can look at this in 1 Samuel chapter 30. Verse 9, and then verse 11, all the way to verse 19. Now, you know the story, just a moment, look at me a moment. You know the story of when David was in Ziklag, and the Philistines came and made a raid in that place and took everything away. 
their wives, their children, everything was taken away. And then first Samuel chapter 30 verse 8, David was asking the Lord, should I pursue these people? And David inquired at the Lord saying, shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them and without fear recover all. So David went he and 600 men that were with him. Now move to verse 11. He went. And they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David. And he gave him bread and he did eat and they made him drink water. And when they gave him a piece of cake of figs and two clusters of raisins, and when he had eaten, his spirit came again to him, for he had eaten no bread nor drunk any water three days and three nights. And David said unto him, To whom belongest thou, and whence art thou? And he said, I am a young man of Egypt, servant to an Amalekite, and my master left me because three days ago, or are gone, I fell, I fell sick. We made an invasion upon the south of the Cherethites and upon the coast which belongeth to Judah and upon the south of Caleb and we burned Ziglag with fire. And David said unto him, Can you bring me down to this company? And he said, Swear unto me by God that you will neither kill me nor deliver me into the hands of my master and I will bring you down to this company. And when he had brought him down, behold, they were spread abroad upon all the earth, eating and drinking and dancing because of all the great spoil that they had taken out of the land of the Philistines and out of the land of Judah. And David smote them from the twilight even unto the evening of the next day. And there escaped not a man of them except 400 young men which rode upon camels and fled. And David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away. And David rescued his two wives. Now verse 19. And there was nothing lacking unto them. Neither small nor great. Neither sons nor daughters. Neither spoil nor anything that they had taken to them. David recovered all. What made David to recover all? The practice of love. The person was in the field. Lying on the ground. If it was today, in the selfish world in which we live, David was already under pressure. The men and the people were already crying. They even thought of stoning David, if you read earlier on, about verse 4 or verse 5, of that first Samuel 30. Everybody was discouraged for, the, for their wives and for their children. They were under pressure. Such a time was not the time to care for another person. Such a time was the time to be bothered about how to bring back your wife and bring back your children. But they paused to show mercy to somebody who was in the field. That one show of mercy was key to total restoration. In a selfish world, we'll never see the almightiness of God. Because people are so focused on themselves. Focused on their own happiness and achievement and ambition and desires and passion. They don't care about nobody. And you never know that you are one step away from what you are looking for. One person away from what you are looking for in life. Just one person. That care, that concern, that mercy, that compassion shown to a person can change your life forever. It did for David. The restoration of all. What has the enemy taken from your life? What is missing from your life? Being in the assignment of loving others can be the key to recovery of what the devil took from your life. The restoration of all was number two. Number three is divine visitation. That is Jehovah God paid you a visit and gave you what money can't buy. That happened to the centurion in Acts chapter 10, verse 1 all the way to verse 6. Acts chapter 10, verse 1 to verse 6 said there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of the Lord of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius, 
When he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Your prayers and your arms, your compassion for the poor, they have come up for a memorial before God. So send now men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodged with one Simon a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell you what you ought to do. And when the angel we spake unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. Long story made sure they went and called Peter. Peter came. God had already spoken to Peter in a vision as well. And Peter came, preached to Cornelius' house. The Holy Ghost came. The first Gentile to receive the Holy Ghost in the whole of the Bible, Cornelius and his household. If there is anybody speaking in tongues in Africa, if there is anybody speaking in tongues in any other part of the world, it came through that channel. Cornelius, what opened the door? Love, prayer, arms given. That is, your love for people will cause God to pay you a visit. Your love for people, your spiritual life, your prayer life, will cause God to do for you what your money couldn't have done for yourself. What is the power of love? Captivity turned around. The restoration of all. Divine visitation. Number four is divine intervention in danger. Your love for people can pull you out of premature death. What you do for others can, can, can cause God to interrupt, interfere, and intervene where the devil wanted to cut you short. That was what happened to Dockers. In Acts chapter 9 and in verse 36. Acts chapter 9 verse 36 says, Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha which is by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and arms deed. Good works and arms deed which she did. Don't, don't, don't forget that good works and arms did, which she did. Now there was a job by a certain, okay, and it came to pass in those days, I'm reading all the way to verse 41, that she was sick and died, whom when they had washed, they laid her in an upper chamber. And for as much as Lydia was nigh to Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Then Peter arose and went with them. When he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber and all the widows stood by him weeping and showing the coats and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed and turning him to the body said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up, and he gave her his hand, and lifted her up. And when he had called the saints and the widows, he presented her alive. You widows, who said, and it was known throughout all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. You widows, who said, this woman is your livelihood. I hand her back to you, so that she can continue to take care of your children and yourselves. Her arms did. Cause Jehovah God to intervene in her danger and death and brought her back to life so that she can continue her work. Your good deed in times of peace speaks for you before God in times of crisis. Your good deeds with men in times of peace, speaks for you before God in times of crisis. What you did for others when you didn't have any problem speaks for you before God when you have a problem. 
he speaks for you. That is how life is. That is why when people are self-centered, egocentric, and it's all about themselves, they never see much result with God. Say that again. Your good deed with men in times of peace speaks for you before God in times of crisis. That is a quotable quote. Your good deed with men, your good deeds with men in times of peace speaks for you before God in your times of crisis. Don't forget it. Hallelujah. Don't forget it. It speaks for you before God in your time of crisis. That is divine intervention in danger. That is the power of love. Captivity turns around. What the enemy took from you can be restored. God visits you to usher you into spiritual depths. I can tell you that oil can increase on your head because of love for people. Power, fire, unction can increase because of love for people. A new dimension of gifting and engracement can happen. What money can't buy? Finally, the power of love is in number five, the fulfillment of life's vision. Loving people can bring you to a point where the vision of your life can be fulfilled. That was what happened to Joseph. Joseph kept on loving and loving in prison. He was taking care of other prisoners. In Genesis chapter 40, verse 1, all the way to verse 5, the Bible said, And it came to pass after these things that the butler of the king of Egypt and his baker offend, had offended their lord, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was wroth against two of his officers, against the chief of the butlers and against the chief of the bakers. And he put them in ward in the house of the captain of the guard into the prison, the place where Joseph was bound. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them and he served them and they continued a season in ward. And they dreamed a dream, both of them. Each man his dream in one night. Each man according to the interpretation of his dream. The butler and the baker of the king of Egypt. Which were bound in the prison. And Joseph came in unto them in the morning and looked upon them. And behold, they were sad. And he asked Pharaoh's officers that were with him in the ward of his lost house. Saying, wherefore look ye so sadly today? And they said unto him, we have dreamed a dream and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me the dream, I pray you. And the chief butler told his dream to Joseph and said to him, in my dream. Now, long story made short. They told Joseph their dreams. Joseph interpreted their dreams. And the interpretation came to pass. One was hanged, the other was released. Almost two years later, that one who was released, who forgot to mention Joseph, Pharaoh had a dream. He couldn't interpret. Long story made short. That one told Pharaoh about Joseph. Who pulled Joseph out? Joseph interpreted the dream of Pharaoh. That became the beginning of the fulfillment of his own life's vision and assignment. You know, it is possible you have every reason why you shouldn't care for anybody. Because you, 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 you have prayers that are not yet answered. You have issues, you, you, you have problems, you are depressed. You know, it feels like physician, heal yourself, that kind of a thing. Oh, if you know how to interpret dreams for people, why, how, why have you not interpreted your own? Why has your own not come to pass? That was the kind of situation Joseph found himself. He had every right to face himself. He was a prison, in prison, wrongly accused. He had every right to be depressed, but he refused. He looked beyond himself and began to help others in prison. That pulled him out. Not long after, to enter the fulfillment of his own lifelong dreams and visions. Are you hearing me? I don't know what your vision is in life. I don't know what you are... You, you want to become in life. See what Zig Ziglar said. You can become anything you want in life. 
if you can help as many other people as possible to become what they want to become in life. You can, you can become anything you want to become in life. If you can help as many other people as possible, become what they will become in life. You can reach anywhere you want to reach in life. If you can help as many other people as possible, reach where they want to reach in life. That is what life is all about. It is not all about facing yourself. It is not all about trying to see what you can achieve to the exclusion of everybody. Somebody said, if you want to travel fast, you may travel alone. But if you want to travel far, you travel with people. Right? People around you may try to, may, may not be as fast as you. But when you are tired and you collapse, they will raise you up and assist you to keep going. You can travel fast alone, but you travel far with others. That's what life is all about. Is God speaking to anybody here at all? Please, move into the practicality of love and see your life change. See captivity turn around. See the restoration of everything the enemy took from you. See divine visitation ushering you into realms of function, grace, help that money couldn't do. See divine intervention in danger preventing you from premature death. See the fulfillment of your life's vision. What is a practical? What is a practicality? How do we love practically? Number one, forgive liberally. That was what Job did. Every offense came to attack your love life. Offense, hurt, pains. And the devil knows how to use human beings very well in conspiracies, in deceptions, in false accusations, in unnecessary hostility and confrontations, in bad, hurtful words. I was talking with our father and the Lord Bishop Yeripo the other day and he's talking about advanced forgiveness. You forgive before the offense arose. The person who hurt you has greater damnation than you who were hurt. Because he said, offenses must surely come. I think it's Matthew 18, 1, 2, there about. He said, but woe unto him by whom the offenses come. It was better he was not born. Can you locate that scripture? Was that Matthew chapter 18? Verse 1, 2, 3, there about. Woe unto the world for offenses, for offenses, because offenses will surely come. He said, but woe unto him by whom the offenses come. While we look at that, Mark chapter 11, verse 24. All right, Luke 17, 1. Then he said unto the disciples, it is impossible but that offenses will come, but woe unto him through whom they come. It were better for him that a milestone were hung about his neck, and he cast, he cast into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. It's better. His tone is hung on his neck and he's drowned in the sea. Forgive liberally. Hand over the offender to the hands of God. Clean your heart and face your future. Because unforgiveness will attack your answer to prayers. Mark Chapter 11, verse 24. And when, therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall receive them. And then when you start praying, forgive. If you have ought against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. Forgive liberally. Forgive liberally. Forgive. Where you are battling with forgiving, Receive the grace. Ask God for the grace to forgive. Some people battle with this subject of forgiveness when we say forgive. They say, do you mean I should become friends with the person who wanted to kill me? No. That is not what it means. That's not what it means. Because you can't be the friend of everybody. That's not what it means. You know, 
I, I give this example. Somebody gave you a cup of water. You wanted to drink it. And you realized that that cup of water was charmed, poisoned. Right? And then maybe a dog or something drank it and died. Which means you were meant to die with that cup of water. Are you going to forgive that person? Yes. You are duty bound to forgive him. So you don't go to hell with him. He, do, he, he, he doesn't know better. If he knew that he was signing for hell through murder, he wouldn't have done that. You are duty bound to forgive him. Number two, are you duty bound to collect another cup of water from his hand whenever he wants to give you water? No, you are not. If no matter how much he claims to have changed, if you don't collect a cup of water from his hand, you are not wrong. <laughs> yeah. Forgiveness means clean your heart towards him and don't, and don't hold it anymore against him. Wisdom means be careful when next you are given a cup of water by the same person. Because the Bible says the nature of man is desperately wicked. That's the balance. So that you are not under pressure. Okay, I should forgive means I should become the friend of that person again. I should forgive means I should no, no, put, my, put myself in a permanent position to be hot over and over. No, that's not what we're saying. Forgive liberally. Number two, pray for your neighbor. Pray for others. Put it like that. Let me put it this way. Include others in your prayer schedule. Include others in your prayer schedule. Ensure that if it is not on a consistent basis, as frequent as it is possible, let somebody else's problem be a part of your, of your prayer. In that way, you are practicing love, practicing selflessness. You are killing selfishness. Job chapter 42, verse 10, Job prayed for his friends. And these were people that hurt him. He prayed for them. You can pray for those who hurt you, but most importantly, pray for someone, maybe who is trusting God for what you are trusting God for as well. You are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Look for somebody whose trust for fruit of the womb is longer than yours. She has been married 30 years. You have been married 3 years. Pray for them. You are trusting God to be married. You are 25 years old, 27 years old girl. And you are very, very agitated and tensed up right now. There is somebody who is 47 who hasn't married. Why don't you include that person who is 47 on your prayer list? And ask God, give her a husband. I've seen people who say, Lord, give this one a husband first before you even remember me. Give that woman a child first before you remember me. When you walk in such kind of love, you break the ice, you break the back of Satan, and you release God to move in ways that will shock you and will shock others. Include others in your prayer schedule. Number three, be interested in the welfare of others. Be interested in the welfare of others. That was what Joseph did in the prison. He looked at the face of the, of the, of the, of the, of the butler and the baker. They were sad. Genesis chapter 40 from verse 5 all the way to verse 8. They were sad. Because they dreamt the dream. They were sad. And he looked at them in the morning and they were sad. There are people who walk through this life and they never pay attention to the look of another person. There are those whose wives are hurting behind them and they are not aware. Children are depressed around them, they are not aware. Husband is under pressure, they are not aware. Employees are stranded, they are not aware. Somebody is suffering around, they are not aware because they, they are so focused on themselves and so into themselves that nothing about any other person bothers them. Be interested in the welfare of others. I'd like you to understand something. People don't care what you know until they know that you care. 
John Maxwell, leadership apostle said that. And I want you to know something else. People are not bothered that you have an immediate answer to their problems. But they are excited that you are interested. They may not, they are not too bothered whether you have an immediate answer. But the show of interest increases their excitement. Knowing People knowing that somebody knows about their challenge and is interested is enough to a, to a great extent. Even before the answers come. Be interested. Honey, are you okay? Young man, are you alright? Everything okay with you? Did you sleep well? Did you wake up well? Is there any challenge? That's what was saying in this season. Pick up the phone and find out from somebody are they well? Be interested in the welfare was that number three? Of others. Number four. Meet practical needs to the level of your personal capacity. Meet the personal needs of others to the level of your capacity, the personal needs of others, or call it the welfare needs of others, to the level of your capacity. You have shown interest, but you go a step further. Where needs, practical needs can be met. Where needs, practical needs can be met. Go that one step further to meet the practical needs of others. That was what David did. First Samuel chapter 30, verse 11 to verse 19, where he saw that man in the field. Okay, verse 11 to verse 13, let's say. That was what the centurion did. Acts chapter 10, verse 1 to 6, that was what Dorcas did. That was what Dorcas did. That was what Dockers did. The, to the level of your capacity, you might not pay school fees of 1 million naira for somebody or even 500,000, but maybe 1,000 naira. The lockdown is on now. Open up like we say. Maybe one 500 naira recharge card or 1,000 naira recharge card might help somebody to buy some ingredients to mix with the rice they have now or to mix with the yam they have now. Let the Holy Ghost lead you at this time. Put somebody's thought in your mind. And you send across to them. Practical needs of others to the level of your capacity. Finally, try to look beyond your needs to the needs of others. Don't let your needs imprison your life. Try to look beyond your needs to the needs of others. Again, that was what Joseph did in Genesis chapter 40 from verse 5 to 8 where we talked about. Try to look beyond your needs to the needs of others. Never become a prisoner of your needs. Never allow your adversity become your captivity. Don't let your need f- f- imprison you. Young lady told story many years ago. How she reached out to a man who lost his wife and was very lonely. Just Christian love. It is well with you. The Lord strengthen you and so forth. That opened her door. It opened her door. Young lady, are you feeling very lonely because you are not married? Look for another young lady feeling very lonely. Place a call to her. How are you doing? I just wanted to let you know that I care and that God loves you 
and that very soon your days of waiting will be over. Easiest way to get out of loneliness is to release companionship to others. For what a man sows, he shall reap. Is there any, anything that is trying to imprison your life? Just jump above it and reach out to others and it will open your door. It's a new day for you. I want us to put these things into practical action in this season. We have tried to give and to help others and to assist others in this season. Not for show. God forbid. You don't make show out of the challenges of people. Never for show. Never for show. It is done based on the admonition of the Lord in loving our neighbors as we love ourselves. And then in Matthew chapter 5 verse 15, you read it. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick that it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. They may see your good works. Hallelujah. There are things that God wants the world to see, to glorify him, that the church is the church. What are the good works? We saw that already in the life of Dockers. Good works and arms deeds. Massive impact on others. We saw that already in the, that this woman was full of good deeds and I mean, good works and arms deeds. That was uh, Acts chapter 9 verse 37, 38. It said, let your light so shine. Give direction to others. Show others how to do it. And also, that the unbelieving world can be silenced. Who think that the church does nothing. This is for your information, beloved. When we meet God, it is not actions that are majorly going to be judged much more than intentions. With God, actions are way. The reason why we do things are the things he will judge. Not just it. There are many things that are wrong. But there may be things that look right, but the intentions are wrong. Intentions will be judged. Hallelujah. Beloved, so go on ahead. Go on ahead and practice love and see the power of love at work, especially in this season. You say this is an adverse season. Yes, Job practiced love in adversity. Joseph practiced love in prison. David practiced love when the enemy hit him hard. The best time to practice love is when you have the greatest temptation to focus on yourself. <laughs> when the temptation is greatest to just face yourself. That's the best time. Let us go ahead and the results will be massive. And like the scripture said, as we love God, we we'll love our neighbor. We'll fulfill the law. Impact on it. Eternity in heaven. You can stand up on your feet where you are and let's appreciate God. Father, we give you the praise. Father, we give you the praise. Father, we give you the honor. Father, we give you the adoration. Father, we worship you. Father, we honor you. Father, we adore you. Blessed be your name. Ziko larate kezina magalaratego jalaparanisi. Let a poor atiza gadengo ramatasalishta. Zeko kaleke pereteke zinana galarata kasatalayadashta. Father, we praise you. Father, we honor you. Father, we adore you. Father, we glorify you. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Blessed be your name. Honor to your name. In Jesus' precious name.